Good morning, Sunday School class. So good to be with you this morning uh, on this cold, rainy Sunday morning. It's beautiful, actually. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, James chapter 2, and I hope you'll uh, uh, be with us uh, through the entire study in order to get the full uh, effect of it. I want to ask you this morning, uh, uh, based on what Jesus said, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Uh, did you tell somebody about Jesus this week? I hope you did. Uh, and uh, if you didn't, did you try? Okay, let's uh, examine ourselves and, and make sure that uh, we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, the other thing is, I want to ask you, uh, are you on time reading your Bible through? Uh, like the televangelist, I see that hand, okay. Uh, glad you're, glad you're uh, being diligent in studying your Bible this year and reading it, uh, reading your way through it. And if you uh, have a question about how to do that, certainly there are a lot of different systems to use to be able to stay on, on track. But uh, I do send out an email, and at the end of the email, there's uh, uh, a guide that tells you what to read that particular week, and I hope you'll do that. Uh, here we are in uh, uh, the fourth session of this particular unit, and it has been absolutely thrilling to study the gospel message during these last four weeks, including today. And uh, if you're watching, uh, online. I hope you'll uh, let us know you're there, and that encourages uh, uh, the other folks watching. It, it encourages me as well, uh, and I certainly do appreciate uh, all of you who watch week in and week out. Today's lesson is a, a, a study in the contrast between uh, uh, faith and works and the, the great controversy that has always been afoot regarding uh, their relationship. Uh, and there will always be confusion about the gospel. Uh, it's the gospel that is the only way uh, for one to find saving faith or saving grace. Uh, that's why the devil hates the gospel, and that's why he works diligently to corrupt it, uh, and he does this through people. People try to corrupt the gospel. Uh, there are other systems that have been developed uh, down through the millennia uh, that many millions of people follow that are uh, basically works-based, uh, uh, a works-based way to find uh, favor with God. Uh, uh, so uh, he uses people to corrupt the gospel message. The demons work to corrupt the gospel message, and Satan himself does that as well. Uh, and we're going to be in James chapter 2, and there's, there has been controversy in the church down through the ages about the message of James uh, as opposed to the message of Paul. Paul... Uh, is very, very clear that the, the message is uh, it's faith alone, uh, in grace alone, in Christ Jesus alone uh, that saves. And, and here uh, James uh, uh, appears to be uh, uh, saying something different, that it's, it's works that uh, makes your faith... Uh, uh, effective with God. Uh, but the message is the same, and both Paul and James agree, uh, but uh, we're going to dig into that uh, 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 situation uh, during our time together this morning. So who who is this James fellow that, that wrote this epistle to the church that was scattered throughout the uh, the known world at that time? Well, uh, James is mentioned in Matthew as the uh, brother uh, of Jesus. He's actually a half-brother of Jesus. 
and in the list of the, the four brothers of Jesus, James is always listed first. So in the time of the writing of this, that would have been a way of signaling who is the oldest in that uh, grouping. So James was the uh, oldest brother, or probably the oldest brother of Jesus. And throughout the life of Jesus, uh, uh, into the, the uh, crucifixion, it is uh, told that James did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Now, uh, granted, think about it. If, if, uh, if you had grown up with a brother, uh, you might find it, it hard to believe that your brother was the, uh, the Messiah, the Son of God. But, uh, and, and that's also uh, the reason many theologians think that when uh, Jesus was on the cross and he spoke to John and he said, John, behold your mother uh, and uh, uh, woman, behold your son, when he was talking to Mary, uh, that he committed the care of Mary uh, to John rather than to his unbelieving elder brother, James. So uh, now that I wish we could spend time there and develop that idea of how a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ has a greater standing in our relationships than an unbelieving uh, brother or sister. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll just leave that one at that. Uh, uh, James has been called old camel knees because of the calluses on his knees from his time spent on his knees in prayer. Uh, and he was uh, uh, the leader of, or one of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And he, uh, uh, when, when uh, the concept of the gospel going to the Gentiles became a controversy in the church. Peter and Paul made the case before James, who listened carefully until they had made their case and then rendered uh, uh, rendered judgment, uh, a good model for us to follow too, to listen carefully to all the facts before, before we respond. This, uh, uh, this text, is, is speaking directly to uh, us and, and our uh, effectiveness in our works or our lack of uh, effort uh, for the gospel. So salvation only comes through grace, through faith in Christ Jesus and not from works. We can't earn it. Uh, and there are many other religions that, that do focus on works as the path to uh, favor with God. But uh, even though uh, we know that intellectually, sometimes I think we forget that as we try to uh, do works to please God and to curry favor with God. And I read this just this week, uh, Oswald Chamber, uh, Chambers said that if we will uh, find joy in, uh, in, in, in Christ and focus on that, then any works that we get involved with will be uh, 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 as if we are in a romance with God. And, and you know that when you're in love with somebody and you want to do something for them, it's not uh, drudgery. It's a joy uh, to be involved in, in doing something for somebody that we love. So um, here's, here's a concept that, that uh, the New Testament lays out that is very clear to us that that many may not have, have thought about. It is through faith in Jesus, uh, God not only forgives us of our sins, he also 
declares us to be as righteous as Jesus himself is. That's why in the Old Testament, uh, we are called to be holy as God is holy. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to have God somehow give us his righteousness. That's the only way we'll ever be as righteous as God is. It's, it's his righteousness that is placed within us. Think about that. That concept, oh, it blows my mind that in spite of my behavior, God sees me as righteous as he sees Jesus. And, it, and that is simply because it's his own righteousness that he's looking at, not, uh, not mine. As a matter of fact, Abraham is cited as an example, and we'll get into that a little later. Uh, now, being justified by faith, we as God's people are empowered through the Holy Spirit to live out a life of loving God and loving people. Uh, that is, some people call that the Jesus Creed. Uh, and you've heard me say it many times that uh, Jesus said there are two things that we need to consider as top priorities. The first is loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the other is loving our neighbor as ourselves. And it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can do that. Uh, that that's how we live it out. That's how uh, uh, we demonstrate our, our faith in God is by letting his power flow through us uh, and come out as works toward others and expressions of love uh, to our neighbor as ourselves. So let's get into the text. Uh, we'll start with James chapter 2, verses, uh, we're going to pick up in verse 14 and read 14 through 17, uh, where James says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Uh, so back in, in the 14th verse, what good is it? A really good question. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says they have faith, but they don't have any works? And then he asked this very pointed question, can that faith save him? Uh, and uh, uh, it wouldn't do it, the, the text any injustice to, to phrase it this way. Can that kind of faith save? Well, just to uh, acknowledge that there is a God, uh, that there is a Son of God, Jesus, and that there are facts about Jesus that are known, uh, that he lived, he died on a cross, and then he rose from the dead. Um, those are just facts, and you can know those facts without having saving faith. And the saving faith comes when we place our faith in the work that Jesus did on the cross as it applies to me, as it applies to you. Um, and faith in God that, that doesn't express itself in acts of love toward others appears to be a dead faith. And that's what James is saying is that when we have true saving faith, we're going to want to be about the Father's business. We're going to want to be with his people on a regular basis in worship. We're going to want to be a part of the solution for the problems of others where they suffer and uh, 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 are hurting. So 
Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, oh, a great man of God who was murdered by the Nazis in a concentration camp just weeks before the liberation came uh, for his faith, uh, wrote that the love with which man loves God and his neighbor is the love of God and no other, for there is no other love. There is no love which is free or independent from the love of God. Think of that. Let's read that again. The love with which man loves God and his neighbor is the love of God and no other. For there is no other love. There is no love which is free or independent from the love of God. Wow. Uh, John tells us uh, 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 also that God is love. And we worship God in, in the way we treat other people. We can, we can be ugly to people, and that's not expressing the love of God. But when we show kindness, when we show grace, when we show mercy to other people, that's actually an act of worship where we are uh, fulfilling our purpose in loving other people or letting God love them through us because it is his love that's actually taking action. And by the way, love is a verb where we're, we're showing affection. We're taking action as an expression of loving others. Jesus uh, expressed those same uh, uh, things as he uh, went from place to place preaching the love of God and healing people, relieving suffering, raising people from the dead, bringing comfort to uh, those that were uh, suffering from grief. Uh, love in action is... Uh, a tangible evidence of our faith. And a part of that is uh, uh, as we are affected, as we are loved, and we recognize how God has done what he's uh, uh, done in our lives, we are overflowing with gratitude and we want to love others. We want to uh, do uh, those things because of the love that God has put within us. Matthew Henry uh, talks about saving faith and, and the difference between uh, uh, saving faith and, and works. And by saving faith, I mean the faith that goes, from, goes beyond just uh, a mental assent to the facts of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus to giving ourselves and placing our faith uh, in him and his work to be uh, uh, effective in the forgiveness of our sins. So uh, Matthew Henry says, you believe that there is a God and you believe that against the atheist and that there is one God, you believe that against the uh, idolaters. You do well. So for all, uh, uh, so far, all is right. But to rest here and take up a good opinion of yourself or of your state towards God merely on the account of your believing in him, this will render you miserable. Oh my, don't you know there are a lot of folks in the church today that are miserable because all they've done is acknowledge the facts of Jesus, his life, recognizing that he is the Son of God and that he died on a cross and rose again, but not believing that that work that he did saves them, that it forgives their sin. So uh, just recognizing the facts leaves a person miserable. Matthew Henry goes on to say, the devils also believe and tremble. If you content yourself with a bare assent to the articles of faith 
and some speculations upon them. Thus far, the devils also go, and their faith and knowledge only serves to excite horror in them. So in a little while, it will do for you if you only agree that those facts are true rather than receiving Christ into your life and believing that the work that he did on the cross and the blood that he shed covers your sins and they've been forgiven. Now, that's when the righteousness of God is imputed to you and you are as righteous as Jesus uh, in the eyes of God. Never in our own eyes are we, net because we understand our, our, our failures and our imperfections, but the way we have standing with God is, is just uh, an amazing thing. Uh, again, remember that Jesus told us there, there are two priorities, loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving others, uh, loving our neighbor as ourself, Love is an action, so we're going to be doing things and showing our brothers and sisters our faith through the things that we do. Now let's move to, the, to section two of our text today. But someone will say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. So uh, our faith, our faith in God, uh, if it's real, will be expressed in our good works, in our, in our love for each other, love in action as we uh, love those around us. Now, I want to ask you, uh, when it becomes illegal to be a Christian, and express our faith, and I'm, I'm not saying if, I'm saying when, when it becomes illegal to be a Christian and to gather together and worship, uh, and you're brought before a tribunal that uh, is trying to prove that you're a Christian, will there be enough evidence from your works to convict you? Mm, sobering question, isn't it? Uh, Note, uh, uh, J. Gresham Malcolm notes that as the faith which uh, James condemns is different from the faith that Paul commends, so also the works which James uh, commends are different from the works that Paul condemns. They're both on the same page, uh, just coming at the problem of faith and works from different perspectives. Now we have a call out that I want to uh, 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 fill in for you, to fill in the blanks on page 86 of your study guide, justification by faith. Justification refers to the moment when a person is objectively declared righteous before God based on the righteousness of Christ's atoning death. This act of declaration takes place through faith in Christ and not as a result of human works or effort. Through justification, a person is made to be right, uh, be in right standing before God, changing what was once an estranged and hostile relationship to one of adoption into the family of God. So the four fill-in words are declared faith, Christ, and adoption. Uh, now, let's move on to the third uh, uh, section of our test, text today, beginning in verse 20. Uh, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works 
and not by faith alone. <clears throat> and in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Now, when we talk about dead faith, we're talking about faith that is ineffective, that faith that doesn't say, faith that uh, is simply a, a mental assent to the facts that are known and established. It's fruitless. It's lifeless. Oh my, if we could, uh, if we could somehow uh, drive home the point with, with folks that are satisfied with just a mental assent to the, the truth that is known, the facts that are known, rather than having uh, applied uh, to Jesus to save them and uh, bring into them the very presence of God, the love of God for, uh, for the Father and for each other, then we could, we could rock the world, couldn't we? If we, could, uh, if we could make that kind of impact in the lives of the folks who have, uh, have made the first step to uh, acknowledge the truth of those facts, but to move beyond what the devils have done, because the devils understand all of those things too, uh, but to move beyond that into a saving faith, accepting uh, uh, Christ into our own our lives, uh, we could, we could rock, again, we could rock the world. Uh, do you want it? Uh, do you want to be shown? And then he says, oh, you foolish person. He's saying to the person who thinks that, uh, that there, there's no uh, evidence of faith, no works that are necessary, um, uh, that if you have a brother or sister in the, in, the, in the church that is hungry or needs clothes and you say, oh, go be filled and be warmed without doing anything for them, uh, we need to be involved with the uh, uh, action of love. So uh, faith apart from works is useless. And, and that's, that's all he's m making the point is that it's ineffective, it's fruitless, it's lifeless, and there's, uh, uh, there's a better way. There is a better way. Uh, was not Abraham, was not Rahab justified by their faith, and then their faith took action. Abraham took action because he believed God when God spoke to him and said, leave your family and leave Ur of the Chaldees and go to a land that I'm gonna show you, and he got up and he left. So he took action in, in, in uh, believing God, and it was counted as righteousness, or it was applied to his account. It was credited to his account. Uh, it's an, it is an accounting term. So it was credited to his account. Righteousness, the righteousness of God was given to Abraham. And think of this. Uh, how many of us want to aspire to the, the uh, level of faith of a prostitute? Well, it says here, uh, James is, is putting her uh, on the same plane with Abraham. Uh, so we see the rich and the poor here uh, uh, exhibited that uh, they both need faith and they are both uh, uh, used as examples of great faith, believing faith, genuine faith, effective faith, fruitful faith, faithful of life, faithful of action, uh, uh, that the works come out of the faith that they have. So uh, 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 it's, uh, it's kind of ironic. I, I know that God has a sense of humor, uh, and I think maybe this is a little uh, uh, of that being expressed here when uh, uh, the Jews, so proud of Abraham as their father, and then he also uh, uh, uses Rahab, uh, the prostitute, as an example of someone on equal footing with Abraham as far as saving faith and righteousness being credited to their account. Uh, 
uh, so let's uh, 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 let's get away from our pride and 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 not think necessarily about the faith of Abraham, but let's also understand that the faith of a prostitute is the kind of faith that we're looking uh, forward to or, or uh, looking for in in our lives as well. So uh, so the body apart from the spirit is dead. So faith, faith that doesn't express itself with uh, action, uh, love in action, is dead also. So we don't want to embrace uh, a corpse and uh, uh, we don't want to embrace a faith that is dead. So active love. Uh, is, is what the breath of God is doing in our lives. And, and we're not to be a container for the love of God. We're to be a conduit uh, or a conduit so that the love of God doesn't just fill us. It flows through us to others. Our faith, if it's genuine, by necessity is going to produce works of love of God and love for our neighbor. Uh, it is that faith, uh, that active, real faith that unleashes God's kingdom in this world through the works of love from us. And, and, and we see that it, it's also a sign of a maturing faith uh, baby Christians uh, don't tend to be great workers. Uh, they, they are more uh, uh, needing nurture than the mature Christian who is supposed to be mature in his faith, who all over the place with uh, works of, of, uh, of the faith, of love. Now, we have the second fill-in on page 87 of your study guide. Uh, justification and works. Justification is not the result of human effort or good works, but through faith in the righteousness of Christ. Although good works do not lead to justification, justification leads to good works in the life of the believer. While good works do not establish justification, they do verify a genuine faith and make our justification evident to Others. That's why we're told to let your good works be done before men so that they can see your faith and uh, desire what you have. So the question this morning, where are you serving? And what is your expression of love to others? So uh, here we have uh, also, I loved Adrian Rogers and can't believe he's been gone 16 years already. Uh, but he said uh, about our, our seeking holiness, uh, holiness is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to holiness. So everything comes down to our faith in Christ, and he is the way. This morning, if there's an emptiness in your life, if you are struggling with this concept of works, if, you're, if your works, if your service is drudgery, and it's a real pain to you and, and you're not excited or, or, or uh, uh, feeling the love of God flowing through you as you do uh, your service, then it may be time for a checkup to make sure that you don't have just a mental agreement with the facts, but that you have the life of God living in you and being expressed through you. Wouldn't it be great if your service became uh, a life of love and a romance with God where your, your service is so exciting and pleasing and satisfying to you? Uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we know that uh, your Holy Spirit through James has told us that faith without works is dead. So we ask that you grant us the faith like that 
of Rahab the harlot, like that of Abraham, so that we can have confidence in you that we are saved, that we are justified, and that uh, we have a standing in righteousness with you. Thank you for all the good works that you're doing through uh, the folks that are that make up the body of Christ and how it relieves such suffering in the world. Help us, Lord, to be a part of that, and may we serve you in confidence and in satisfaction and in love. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.